So Rajnath Singh's comment, the Union uh, Defence Minister's comment uh, likening Narendra Modi with Mahatma Gandhi has a context because uh, it has been touched upon in this new book called The Architect of the New BJP and this has uh, a lot of interesting insights. It's been written by Mr. Ajay Singh and I have the privilege of having Mr. Ajay Singh with me. Thank you very much. Uh, you're the press secretary to the president. Uh, you're a, a renowned journalist and uh, also the author of this uh, book. Mr. Ajay Singh, my first question to you is, uh, let's talk about the book itself. The architect of the new BJP. Uh, what is the idea behind this book? And why do you feel that uh, Naren Modi is the one who has transformed the party beyond the obvious? Thank you, Sanket. You have used too many adjectives for me, which <laughs> I do not deserve. In any case, uh, well, uh, I started writing this book in 2017 and 2017 was the moment when I realized that the expansion of BJP is uh, phenomenal. Uh, assuming, I mean if you go back, uh, uh, if you go a decade back or 15 years back, if somebody tells me that there will be a BJP regime in uh, Northeast, I would not have believed it. But now, even those geographical area which were not uh, influenced by the BJP, now it is in the embrace of BJP. So I thought that I should write, uh, I should write a book. Although I am mean, uh, writing a book is uh, somewhat very difficult. I am used to writing articles of thousand words, thousand mm. five hundred words as a journalist, and that comes very easy to me. Mm. But of course writing a book was something entirely different. So I started doing it and I interviewed, I interviewed around 100 odd people who worked with the Prime Minister during different phases of his life on party building issues. And then I read a lot. I read uh, books on RSS, I read books on uh, those books I mean, uh, which were uh, published in 50s. 60s, Baxter for instance, mm. so many books and then I wanted to find out I mean what is the, uh, how organization building is important part of democratic process. Mm. So I started doing it and then I wrote a piece, uh, this book mm. and now it is in your hand. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Now one aspect of this was touched upon by uh, Mr. Rajnath Singh also uh, when the book was released and uh, he talks about uh, a sort of a comparison between Mahatma Gandhi and uh, Narendra Modi that uh, you know he draws a parallel between the two. Uh, can you explain the context in which you have mentioned that in your book? No, he didn't draw a parallel. What he tried to say or what he said rather was that uh, uh, the understanding profound understanding of social psychology of India. If you compare it with Gandhi, so there is no parallel to him except Gandhi. So How it so was so? in a limited context. You see, in Gandhi's case... Is that what you have touched upon? In yeah, I have book? touched upon okay. it. I have touched upon it because there are so many decisions uh, by the Prime Minister which entailed hardship for common people. But still the trust in him has not shaken. So it was in this context because you see, I mean, uh, uh, the, if you take the political history of India, Indira Gandhi imposed emergency. She is uh, still recalled by people as authoritarian for that emer uh, imposition of emergency. Similarly, if you take the case of VP Singh, Mandal commission the moment he uh, I mean uh, implemented that the the kind of magic that he had it was gone but in Modi's case it didn't happen so what I tried to say that his understanding of the Indian social psychology could only be matched with Gandhi who uh, that you take decisions that may appear unpopular, that may appear uh, irrational, 
uh, and yet maintain not, the not irrational but mm. sort satyagraha yeah for instance mm. if you take that then uh, people are going there they are hit by lathis and uh, bleeding uh, from their head on mm. and still they are uh, they have no complaint so if you take that i mean of, of course I, I, i'm not i'm not the one to say that uh, there should be comparison between two distinct mm. personalities mm. i'm not saying uh, uh, that mm. what i'm trying to say is that profound understanding of indian social psychology mm. so it was in a context of social psychology okay. uh, in which i said that and which rajnath singh also referred to his because uh, you know uh, mr singh the thing is that many uh, you mentioned the name of indira gandhi she has also taken she had taken many decisions that uh, appeared to be uh, you know uh, contrarian or away from the ordinary uh, but that comparison is never made with mahatma gandhi no because you see indira gandhi uh, had not taken i mean decision to go on in a war that could be one but gandhi cannot be compared with that mm. it was in a limited context that understanding the social psychology of india that uh, i mean you pursue the non violence but at the same time you inflict i mean you you uh, you let your workers get be inflicted by violence mm. from the other side mm. and still you assure your workers mm. that uh, no it's all right so that was something which was uh, which i have not seen and which happened during uh, modi ji's uh, time mm. that uh, demonetization or uh, uh, gst or so many other decisions that initially caused some kind of hardship mm. but people had so much trust in him that they decided to repose full trust mm. that was my point okay okay so it is in that context that this statement has been made yeah it is in that context mm -hmm. only it is in that and context and you feel that there is no other parallel in this context uh, as i don't see i process. don't see i don't see any other parallel in india at least when you say understanding the uh, social implications and understanding the people the psyche uh, you feel that uh, that has been the reason why uh, narendra modi uh, appears to take certain decisions that appear risky but still the government goes ahead doing it no if you read and that explains the electoral uh, gains also uh, not in terms of so much electoral gains what uh, i try to write in this book uh, if uh, you see that mm. then i have written that uh, that he will not take a decision with bad intention mm. he may take a wrong decision but intention would be not doubtful mm. so he convince the masses that his intention is always right uh, whether or not the decision may be correct yeah yeah mm. that is the reason he took the decision and then he withdrew it as well mm. and withdrew it for the la larger uh, interest of the nation that is what he said mm. uh, while uh, we're drawing this uh, uh, these bills on uh, farm, agriculture farm laws, fa yes. farm laws. yeah mm. so that was the reason i was also reading uh, uh, you know a comment in the context of uh, this statement and uh, uh, one of the people said that uh, uh, the idea of secularism is also uh, in a weird way gandhian what the government is following right now gandhi used to love to wear his religion on his sleeve uh, and so does this present dispensation so you don't have to hide your religious identity to be a secular well uh, yeah it's reality mm. gandhi was the example of that mm. he was uh, i mean uh, he used to wear his religion on the sleeve mm. and still uh, there is no other uh, secular uh, person than him mm. so uh, we all know that so uh, i mean his secularism was different mm. as compared to other secularism for instance mr nehru uh, nehru i would not say nehru i mean don't draw comparison between nehru and gandhi both were uh, mm -hmm. great people 
so so i won't say that his secularism was uh, different everybody has his own style of doing uh, politics and his own under understanding of society so nehru also has a deep understanding uh, i'm as a student of history not as a writer of this book correct uh, i know that uh, nehru has deep understanding mm. so uh, i'll not compare the sure. gandhi versus nehru or this kind sure. of yeah uh, my final question mr singh uh, apart from this comparison uh, in the context in the social context uh, anything else you would like to share with us why you feel that uh, this is uh, a brand new bjp uh, totally different from the way it was did narendra modi build on something he had and change it or has he only uh, taken forward uh, what was started by say uh, vajpayee and advani no sanket uh, i would say that when i say that brand new bjp it doesn't mean uh, mean that he has changed everything mm. it was a continuous process mm. what do you see the bjp as of now it's a bjp which has acquired a kind of vote share which has position itself as a principal pole mm. so the kind of vote share the bjp has right now it has reached a position which congress used to have in 60s so my uh, thesis of new bjp uh, is not dealing from the past okay. it is linked with the past mm. and i'm sure that it is a continuation of uh, um, uh, sundar singh bandari or uh, kushabhau thakre and lk advani hmm. so it should not be seen as delink from that okay hmm. it has links hmm. but what i'm trying to say that the face of the bjp has changed because now you used to say about uh, congress congress as the principal pole hmm. now the bjp is the principal pole every other party revolves around that hmm. that uh, was my thesis my my final question uh, while you uh, call him the architect of the new bjp building on the past uh, does the book also look into aspects of uh, what happens after modi what happens to the bjp yeah it looks after that uh, towards the end of the th chapter i have mentioned about it that with this kind of robust organization in place bjp will keep on inventing its own icons of the time mm. so it will outlast individuals okay congress has outlasted individuals mm. so bjp will also outlast individuals so confining it to one individual would be the wrong assessment i believe mm. all right thank you very much mr singh for joining thank you thank, thank you, you sir